many people uh, now don't even remember how it was before the ADA, but I can tell you from my own personal experience, there has been uh, many, many changes, and it's not just the number of, of accessible parking spaces you find in front of the drugstore. Um, used to be restaurants were not accessible, generally speaking, theaters and, and uh, recreational spaces. Used to be that uh, many places of business were not accessible uh, to people with disabilities. It used to be that when we thought about disability, we might think about a person in a wheelchair and not really consider people who had hearing impairments or other sensory impairments like blindness. Uh, we certainly didn't think about people who had intellectual disabilities. And uh, now I think the public at large has gained a greater appreciation of uh, what it means to be disabled. In fact, more and more of us are becoming disabled as a result of the baby boom generation. And I think that, that the uh, impact of our aging demographic will play a great role in the future as we continue to work on implementing the ADA. The ADA Center Network was spawned by those original grants from the U.S. Department of Education. Uh, the 10 centers cover the nation and people can call 1-800-949-4232 any time of the day or night and leave a message and their messages will be answered during working hours during the week. Uh, the ADA centers take a lot of calls and, and they process these calls over the last 25 years. There have been millions of calls processed by the ADA centers. Uh, calls from people with disabilities who want to know uh, what their rights are and to clarify certain matters. Call from school teachers and school administrators, calls from business people, architects, lawyers, uh, physicians. Uh, every sector of our society has been affected by the ADA and representatives of all those sectors really have uh, depended on the ADA centers to give them the, the support they need to appropriately implement the law. It's interesting to me that many of the calls that we get at our Southwest ADA Center are coming from attorneys who are employed by law firms uh, that uh, work for major corporations and they want to be sure the advice they're giving their clients is uh, appropriate and accurate. And we're glad to do that. That's our job. Our job is not to uh, prosecute cases or to uh, uh, find violations, but to ensure that those who are eager to implement the law do so appropriately and to assure that those who are not aware of their obligations under the law are made to be so. Uh, but the ADA network, by and large, I think has been um, responsible for the pr progress that we've made in implementing effectively the Americans with Disabilities Act. Without the network of ADA centers, I don't believe we would have made as much progress as we have. I think they're important because they're traditionally the, the single uh, annual uh, opportunity for ADA centers and ADA advocates to come together and take a look at what current issues are. Uh, I would congratulate and applaud the Great Plains ADA Center for uh, conceiving uh, the program of symposia and also for hosting it over so many years. It's a, not an easy task to put together a conference of four or five and even 600 people and to do so in a place that's remote from your own home and, and locale and, and uh, the folks at the ADA Center in Great Plains have done a marvelous job in doing so. It's been very important in helping to synthesize some of the ideas that we get in disparate places. So uh, the experience that we have in Syracuse is sometimes different to but not unrelated to the experience we might have in Houston or Seattle or Oakland and to have the leaders of all those centers together in a forum where they can openly discuss these issues, uh, where we can bring in experts to consult with about these issues helps uh, the ADA Center Network but more importantly I think it helps to promote uh, ADA progress and ADA implementation efforts throughout the country and among many groups in addition to the ADA centers. But the areas that have been slow to come along, comparatively speaking, are health care, housing, and community services and supports. Clearly, these are the areas that we need to work on the hardest, not only because they're the areas we've made the least progress in, but they're the areas now that have the greatest demand in terms of the need for assuring full participation 
by seniors and people with disabilities going forward. This uh, baby boom demographic, we're talking about uh, 75 million people over the age of 65 who by the year 2030, half of them may have disabilities. So add those uh, 37 and a half million people to the 43 million people that we generally have in the population now with disabilities, and you've nearly doubled the population of people with disabilities because this population is mainly a uh, effect of the senior, the elder population. It's going to be uh, conditioned mostly by chronic illness uh, and diseases that create disability later in life. Uh, people who become disabled later in life as a result of chronic illness and disease and age are finding it more difficult to adapt to the environment and more difficult to do what they want to do and that is age in place and uh, I believe that uh, the efforts of the ADA centers, the independent living centers, uh, disability advocates all over the country in general need to be focused on assuring that health care is available to every person uh, regardless of whether or not they have a pre-existing condition, so to speak. I think the uh, Obamacare, as it's frequently referred to, addresses that, and I think we have to be sure that that's maintained in the legislation should it be amended. But in addition to that, I think we have to move toward a more community-based uh, paradigm of service delivery for health care, and perhaps more importantly, for basic support services. People who want to live in their own communities, in their own homes, and to age in place, rather than the alternative, which might be some kind of adapted living or, or assisted living facility or even a nursing home, uh, people who wish to live more independently in the community are going to need some of the kind of assistance that they would receive in a facility but they need to have it adapted so that they can use it in their homes. They need to have infrastructure available so that service givers, uh, providers of care, can reach them in their homes on a timely basis so that there's good communication. We have breakthroughs in technology every day and some of that's communication technology and informatics. Informatics and communication technology can be used by people to help organize their lives with helping people and with robotics as far as that's concerned. The new technologies can do a lot, but it won't happen unless we're focused and working on that area. And we have to work together, we have to learn together, and uh, we have to be ready to address those issues in the future uh, before other groups get there because uh, we are, in fact, the cutting edge.